Hey guys, Carol97 again. This time with a review of the War 44 scale High Great and Will Century Gelgu Commander type Shars Custom from the original Gundam series. For the colors, we get the usual Shars colors, a combination of burgundy red, salmon pink, and some black to make things stand out. Then, as far as the looks are concerned of this thing, we get a nice clean, sleek Gelgook design. Not too much whistles and bells going on, little bits of detailing here and there where it's necessary. And also, the clean look doesn't just extend to the, uh, you know, the detailing, but also to the seam lines, as a lot of them are actually nicely hidden, especially for the time. Like inside uh, the sides here, and only when you turn it around you can see a seam line here, but if you're just looking at it from the front, not a lot of seam lines to be spotted on this model. Very good for the time. And for stickers, we only get two of them. One is a combo of the black inside with the mono eye nicely in the middle. And then the second one is a spare mono eye in case you want to paint the inside or the entire thing. And you're not too confident in your ability to paint a nice circle. So it's a nice addition that we get. And all this means that for an out-of-the-box build, this Galgook is going to look pretty damn nice. On to articulation. The head goes a bit up, bit down, rotates around all the way. There we go. It's on a ball joint, but not on a double ball joint, so no forwards and backwards movement. And when you remove the scalp, you can also move the eye around. Though on mine, it is extremely tight. The arms, this thing here, moves nicely upwards, allowing the arm to go all the way up like that, unhindered. Back down. There's a joint here to move it slightly forwards, a little bit backwards, and rotates around all the way. Elbow, just a single joint, typical 90 degrees bend. Hands are on ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around, and do everything a ball joint does. Now, the elbow is unfortunate because it did come after the Hazels and the Zaku 1, both of which had double elbow joints. The waist is on a ball joint here, and then a regular rotating joint down there, giving this thing some really interesting articulation. So it rotates around all the way, and for the time, it was definitely not standard to have this kind of ball joint going on all the way up there. And then, this is a quite unique joint because, well, the Galagook is a rather unique design when it comes to the front skirts. So you can get it all the way up like that. Might look a bit awkward, but really considering that this is the Galagook, this is pretty much the best they could do. Then we get a very, very good double uh, knee joint. And considering the design, I was not expecting this from a now relatively old high grade. Legs go out also very nicely and rotate around just on their ball joint. And then there's even an extra swivel joint which allow which will allow it to um, have some extra rotation as well. Also, I just want to point out that there is some good attention to detail down here. It's not just barren, actually colored down there, and also some very nicely detailed butt thrusters. Back skirts don't move, however. And while we're looking down here, now is as good a time as I need to point out that by removing this panel, we'll reveal his butt, which is compatible with the Action Base number two, with the rectangular add-on, which also means that it's compatible with the Action Base um, that you would get with, for example, the Ashimar. And then finally, the feet are on two joints. We have a hinge joint at the top and then a ball joint at the bottom. So, you guys slightly forwards, a little bit backwards, not a huge amount because of the design of the feet. Side to side, once again a little bit. Rotate out actually really far. And then at the back, we once again have nicely detailed thrusters, even though you don't see a lot of them, they are there. Also, the inner detail of the feet is actually very nice for it being hidden and for it being a high grade. So at the time, for being the Gelgook, the articulation was surprisingly good. If only it had those double jointed elbows, and it would have been pretty much perfect, really. On to accessories, starting off with the beam rifle. Unfortunately, it is pretty loose in the hands, which is surprising because this trigger finger hand is unique to the Gelgook, 
and the weapon is also unique to the Gelguk, which, well, would make you think it would have been a perfect fit. Fortunately, however, because the beam rifle has this quite long uh, stock at the back, you can jam it into the arm, stabilizing the beam rifle just like that. So it's not going to flail around thanks to the design of the beam rifle. Next up is this really cool giant Zulu style shield which also houses the beam naginata and cool fact the beam naginata can be placed on both the left side and the right side or if you buy a second Galaguk you can have him dual wield the beam naginatas and this thing can be placed on either arm simply peg it in there there's also a hole on the other arm or Take it apart again, flip the switch, and you can now store it onto the back, as it was mainly used in the original Gundam series, if I recall correctly. Unlike the beam rifle, the beam Naginata fits into the hand absolutely perfectly. And to complete the look, we also get an extra open left hand. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? No. <laughs> alright, alright, I'm sorry. Now, in all seriousness, should you buy this thing? Uh, still no. Now, hear me out. For 1,500 yen, it's a great model kit. It comes with all the accessories you'd want it to. Really good articulation. Looks awesome. So what could possibly be the problem with this thing? Why I'm saying no. Well, it's not a problem with this thing, it's a problem with this thing. Now our Shars Gelguk retails for 1,500 yen, and the Gelguk Cannon retails for 1,600 yen. Now the thing is, Gelguk Cannon comes with absolutely everything Shars Gelguk comes with, and more for only 100 yen extra. It comes with a cannon backpack, comes with a missile launcher, comes with an extra shield, and also comes with an extra head. In fact, this thing has four possible head options. The regular cannon head, the regular Gelguk head, and then the commander variant of both of those. So it's just that for 100 yen, you're getting an enormously better deal with this thing than with Shars Gelguk. And that is why, unfortunately for Shars Gelguk, I have to say, eh, Unless you're a big Char fan or you gotta have all the Galgooks, go for Char's Galgook. If you just want any Galgook, go for the Galgook Cannon, no doubts about it. You just get so much more for 100 yen. Uh, just not the beam rifle he's holding, that's from one of the weapon sets. And just to make things absolutely clear, yes, Char's Galgook is compatible with everything that the Galgook Cannon comes with, so you can make yourself a Char's custom Galgook Cannon. So for size comparisons, first of all, here is next to the Galgook Jaeger and Vish Donahue's Galgook. Now as awesome as all these are, none of them beat the Galgook Cannon. Then here is next to some other Char machines, Char's Custom Dom and Char's Custom Zaku. And just look at the size of this Galgook. And finally, here is next to the standard size Jim Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And that's all for this review, and see you all next time.